In the past few months, we've seen a lot of gun-related injuries and deaths when it comes to kids. Whether it's a result of gang-related violence, innocent bystanders, or accidents where a child gets a hold of a gun. So what do physicians that deal with the aftermath of these injuries have to say? Bridget is standing by now to ask a doctor. First off, what we're talking about right now is not the right of gun ownership, but we're just talking about what's happening in regards to gun safety when it comes to our children. And this morning we have Dr. Don Plumley here. He is the director of uh, pediatric director at Arnold Palmer Children's Hospital. And thank you for coming in this morning. We really appreciate it. I know you're very busy. Right. Well, th um, thanks for having us. We're real passionate about this and it's it's an issue that's kind of cropped up a little more than usual. So and and we appreciate about. you sharing your perspective as well because that's, that's one that we don't get that often. What is it like in, in the pediatric unit when it comes to gun injuries in our kids? So most of them are innocent bystanders um, and it happens so fast so it's devastating. It's devastating. Guns have a lot of energy and children are smaller so their injuries are worse. You have the family to deal with, but also the whole community. Mm -hmm. We all as caregivers, it hits us really close to home. We've taken care of several of these children, and it's devastating. I feel sorry for the law enforcement officers at the scene, the paramedics, the EROR, ICU staffs that have to take care of these kids, and the family. So it's got a broad effect on our whole community. Can you explain if there's been an uptick, or does this ebb and flow? No, it, there's been a def definite uptick. Historically, diseases were the most common cause of childhood death and then in about the 60s motor vehicle accidents 2020 it's gun violence so 1 to 24 most common cause of death we as a community probably this year since the turn of the year in January we've seen a pretty good uptick of we used to see a rare gunshot one at the children's hospital we're seeing about one a week we've had several deaths we probably had five or six deaths in our community in the last two months so it, mm -hmm. there's definitely been an upswing and hopefully it's transient and we can, we can mm -hmm. control it what is sort of the age range when it comes to say you know it's a gun safety issue at home or you know exposure to a firearm and there's an accident versus the age range where it was violence uh, right. you so know, the, the kind of that one to nine is more either innocent bystanders domestic violence or we had a lot of just children finding a gun in the mm -hmm. house and playing with it you get into teenagers then you get more into the homicide violence and unfortunately a lot of self-inflicted wounds as well there's, yeah. there's access to guns yeah and what, what happens when it comes to gun safety at home or, you know, teaching your kids how to handle it when they get out, you know, say at a friend's home or somewhere, you know, I hate to say it, but, you know, in the public somewhere, school or, right. you know, at, an, at a place of business. And I think that's part of our solution is to do a better job. That's what we do with motor vehicle accidents. There's a safety component. So the ideal thing is to remove the guns from the home. If you're a hunter and you don't need them in your immediate home, store them off site. If you have them in the home, try to store them unloaded, ammo in one area of the house, gun in the off opposite part of the house, always locked if possible. And the kind of cool thing now is they have gun locks that are biometric markers. So just like our iPhones and whatnot with a fingerprint, only the owner of the phone can open it. Some research going forward, we may get to the day where we can open our phone with, a, with our fingerprint. Maybe the gun will be assigned only to you and then it's, it's harmless. If they can't open the gun and pull the trigger, then that should obviate the injury. So there's some safety issues we can do as well. Yeah, and, w and when it comes to maybe teaching our kids about, you know, the right way to use them and those types of things, what do you think is a good time to, to do that? Say, if you, you know, if you do have hunting in your family and, you know, you like to go out and shoot. I, and I think that's fine. It just, you, you learn, it's just like water safety. Gun safety can start at an early age, mindful use of it, and just to make sure that you teach that early on. Mm -hmm. so. And what types of injuries do you see most commonly? Um, fortunately, a lot of injuries are not fatal. Uh, we see a lot of extremity. You know, kids playing with a gun, this is teenager, you got a, a shot in the leg, shot in the arm. Now, even those are devastating. I have a girl shot two months ago that's just now starting to walk again. We have one child that's paralyzed. So we hear about their dramatic deaths and whatnot, but there's lots of injuries also. Mm -hmm. Fortunately, a lot of them are not severe. They're graze wounds and whatnot, but it's inches, it's, it's just a minute difference between a life-threatening and not. And what, what types of, you know, surgeries are involved in that? I mean, is it skin grafting? Is it, you know, what have, what's the worst you've seen I mean, that people have been the, able to recover from? The worst are head injuries, and we've had some children survive those. We have a child right now that had some intestinal and organ injuries. 
Um, those be as survivable. So with the trauma center, we can be very aggressive. Now, the one thing that helps us children are super resilient. So they can tolerate a lot, but we prefer not to have to do it all. The b best way to take care of it is have it not happen. Right. You don't want to see them, but if, if they're there, you're able to work some miracles yeah. in many cases. But I, I want you to tell us before we go, just what, you know, what can we do to get more resources and to you know, just stay aware of the safety issues involved? I think there's a public health issue. So you know, if we can decrease access, increase safety, um, identify at-risk individuals, and sometimes that can be done in schools and whatnot, and then research going forward. Are, are there other safe things we can do? The other thing is we still live in a safe community. This isn't an everyday occurrence. Like there's several cities in the United States where there's a child getting shot every single day or several times a day. We're not there, and I hope we never get there. Mm -hmm. I think we have a very engaged sheriff, police chief, state and local governments that people just in the last week in the news people are taking this really seriously and hopefully we can change it before it becomes an epidemic so, that's, that's, so. that's our hopes as caregivers the less we take care of kids with gunshot wounds the better yes well thank you so much thank you for what you do and thank you for sharing some time with us today to give us great. some insight on what's happening at the hospital great thanks so much all right